Hello, Randy Rain here again, and this is another video to stave off boredom from this quarantine thing going on. I hope everybody's doing safe. I hope everybody is staying in and doing what they can to keep from spreading this stupid thing. So I'm doing my part. Now this one's not going to be all that technical because I'm going to make some foam rubber hammers that I need. I, I make these to sell. You can go to raincloudmagic.com and buy them. Uh, that's magic tricks and foam props and all kinds of cool stuff. Go check that out. This is the hammer mold. Now, the outer mold is, uh, it's seen better days, but it still works. This is the rubber mold here. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on how this happens because you know, this is my job, so some of the stuff is kind of, how you say that word, proprietary. Uh, that's the best I can do. Anyway, I'll give you some hints and stuff, so just a quick interesting thing, show you how I do it. So this is the rubber part of the hammer mold. And the first thing I do is I take some black pigment. It's a powder pigment. It's actually iron oxide. All my pigments that I use are non-toxic. They're made from either iron oxide or minerals and it's the same stuff that people use to make makeup and stuff. So I take the black and I lightly hit it here and basically end up what happens here is I'm just hitting the high spots. So this is actually molded from a real hammer and this was a wooden handle and so the texture of the wood is in the mold and so here, what I'm doing is hitting the high spots, which will be the low spots when it comes to actually making the hammer. And the low spots need to be darkened because that's where all the dirt and grime goes into. Not a lot of pigment is on here, so it's kind of like dry brushing. I also hit some spots on the metal part of the hammer because it would be dirty as well. Next, I'm going with some straight up iron oxide. And if you don't know what iron oxide is, it's rust. So this is very much just pure rust. And of course, the metal parts get rusty. <laughs> so I hit some spots to make a rusted hammer. And then on the wood, I do a little bit more light because I'm going to add some a darker brown to the wood. Kind of the same thing that I do with the black. Just want to hit the high spots and just randomly kind of add some b darker brown into the handle. Now I actually have a mortar and pestle here to mix up my own powdered pigments because you can't always find what you want so you have to make it. Uh, this is some that I've made. This is a lighter yellower type of brown and this stuff it's going to be completely covering the handle. Now, of course, the handle goes all the way through the metal part, so I have to hit up here as well. And there's a little bit here. I always do the handle first before because if I get some brown onto the metal part it looks fine but if I get some the metal part onto the wood it doesn't so I always start with the wood part and I have this is again a powdered pigment uh, this is made from aluminum Now you can't have too much powder because it will affect the foam. So you need to get all the excess off. Then I can put this together and my torn up piece goes like that. Now you have to tie this mold up 
because this foam is extremely strong. You can see this is what causes the outer mold to get broken up. I really do need to make another one, but it's just to hold the rubber mold part in the shape that it needs to be. That's all it really does, so as long as it can do that, it's fine. And there it is. Now here's the part that I really can't show you too much. This is a Flex Foment product from Smooth On, but I mix them myself. I've played around with these foam stuff so much, I know all the problems that can arise, and this foam is very, very fickle. So I've found mixing my own version of the foam up works the best, so I can't really tell you which ones I'm using. But this is the catalyst, and this is actually the resin. This is uh, urethane and it all gets mixed together. The urethane's all the same. It's the catalyst part that I mix up myself. Thorough mixing is very important, but you can't mix it too long because it's going to start going off. And of course the foam isn't very strong, so there has to be a support rod placed inside. And now we wait. Once it starts foaming up, I cover up the hole to put in some back pressure. That way it'll get into all the little nooks and crannies inside the mold. One thing important when you're doing the foam is it should look very white. If it's looking yellow, something's wrong. If it's very, very big bubbles, it's wrong. It should be really little tiny, tiny bubbles and very white and it should foam up once it starts to cure. It should bubble up and make it rise. If it ever just comes out flat and like oozing, it's not right. And you're, it's not going to work. It has to be foamy. See how it's humping up? That's what you want. You don't want it to be flat across there. You can see you got a nice fluffy dome here. Look how much it's risen. It's all cured now, but that's what I want. You can see this is how it gets tore up. And every time it gets a little more torn up. These are the vent holes. Now I just need to clean up this flashing around here.
So normally I make these for magicians and entertainers, uh, also for stage and movies as props so you can hit somebody with it and of course it's not going to hurt. Now, right now, as this quarantine's going on, every single entertainer I know is completely out of work. Everything has been canceled. So, if there's no need for magicians and entertainers to work, there's no need for them to buy props like this. So, that means I'm out of work as well. But still, the average person could use a foam prop. Let me tell you a little story about something I did with this hammer. I went over to a friend's house. He lived in an apartment. And there was some maintenance going on outside. So I knock on the door. He says, come in. I open the door. He's sitting on the couch. I have one of these foam hammers. And I go, hey, uh, this was laying out in front of your door here. Is this yours? And so he goes, no, no. The maintenance was working outside. They must have left it. And I said, oh, okay. Well, I guess you can keep it. And, and I chunked it right at his face. And he nearly jumped out of his skin. I mean, it was the most funniest thing you've ever seen in your entire life. Uh, so, I, off, a lot of people buy these just to play tricks on people. So, I mean, a lot of construction people will buy them like if they're working and they go, here, take this hammer and they toss it to them and watch the people freak out and stuff. Uh, I have all kinds of these props. So, if you want to help me out, you can go to raincloudmagic.com. There's a link below if you don't want to try to figure it out. Just follow the link below. I have all kinds of stuff like this. So, please, go check it out. You might find something you like and have some fun with. But, uh, that's how I make a foam rubber hammer. So, Thanks for these people right here. They, they're patrons, so if you become a patron, you actually get a discount on my store at raincloudmagic.com. So maybe think about doing that. And you also get stuff sent to you, possibly a foam hammer. You never know. So thanks for watching.